Hi everyone, you're probably here from our Banlist Part 3 episode. And if you're not, you should definitely go check that out, because it involves a lot more discussions that are more relevant to CDH and some of the problems we may see with it, and uh, I think it's a pretty interesting topic. Uh, if you are here from that episode for the deep dive on divine intervention and the meaning of competitive play, um, welcome. You are... Uh, about to make a decision, for sure. I'm not going to say it's a good decision, because this discussion got long and kind of navel-gazy at time. But, uh, you know, we recorded it, and we felt that if we were as passionate about it as we were, that probably some of you would want to hear it. So, uh, this is the section that uh, got cut from the proper episode, in the interest of saving everyone who didn't want to hear it some time. And without further ado... I'll just let it play. Thanks for checking this out. And Morgan, you can talk about it. So, the the, the one card I would actually ban from a philosophical perspective, uh, and it's not so much the EDH perspective as it is the competitive perspective, and that card is Divine Intervention, uh, which essentially it has some hoops. If it sticks around for long enough, the game ends in a draw. Uh, and fundamentally, in my mind, draws are... Uh, shooting for draws is anti-competitive um and the other funny little note um the first ban list episode i made some throat clearing noises about world fire and i said i'll bring it up when we talk about this later and here we are a month later talking about divine intervention the reason i cleared my throat about world fire is because i also don't think it's a card that you play when you're trying to win and so that's just why I mentioned that at the time, but essentially I think that obviously Divine Intervention is a card that like can't make you win. It makes you draw the game if it works, and so I don't think it has any place in competitive okay. play. So the reason why we got into um, contention around Divine Intervention was that I was trying to attack Morgan's idea of what it means to be competitive Um and and whether or not divine intervention is like because I, I think we're pretty much all in agreement that we'd be fine with divine intervention being banned um and the, although i do i would do disagree with the world fire bit about you know that's not a card people play when they try to win i think i think that's certainly something that could be um like y you, you could imagine that you know you're you build your deck extremely low to the ground to try and take advantage. Yeah, at, at, sorry. At the time, at the time, I wasn't saying like we should ban Worldfire. It was like I could see an argument for banning Worldfire along well, the was, lines gonna, of this is a card that people. I was going to say like I think Worldfire is actually more competitive um, than some other examples of cards that are actually legal um, that could be used, and I think that they're actually more egregious offenders than Divine Intervention. Um, and then I'll, I'll make my case on on why that is because I, I do think the the thing about wasting time is really the. Um, like a big thing and this is why even in casual circles people are not a fan of chaos decks uh and group hug because it really when when everyone is when three players are trying to um build their decks and and interact with with people trying to win um with, with the idea that they're trying to win and their opponents are also trying to win um things just get so messed up when the one player is like Oh, I'm just gonna, you know, give. Uh, let, let's 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 just do you and me draw a card, or everyone just draw cards and feed the combo player. You know, like um, you're just throwing fuel on the fire, and it's it's not. It, it's just detrimental to lots of people's enjoyment. Um, the the worst cards that I think, un, unlike World Fire, is is uh, is like the the massive chaos cards, like the cards that uh, God, it's not. Uh, Scramble, Scramble versus, versus Thieves Auction? Scramble versus Warp, Warp World, World. Yeah, yeah. Thieves Auction. Like, these kinds of cards where it just... Like, if, if I... <laughs> rolling dice to decide the game is not fun. Right? And if you're doing this and you're not, like, somehow breaking parity on it and using it as, like, a weird stacks effect, like, Possibility Storm is a... 
I'm not, I'm not going to get mad at a possibility storm if someone is using it as a stacks effect and they're trying to break parity on a possibility storm. I will get mad at possibility storm if you play it and just say, ah, guys, isn't it so fun and random that, you know, you get you don't get to play your spells and things are just weird and random and wacky and quirky like that annoys me. It's it's very it's very similar to Armageddon pass and like with just nothing to do. It's it's time wasting and disruptive for no reason. Um, so like I also would get mad at uh, World Fire if if it was just kind of for no reason. I mean, I, the fact that it sets everyone's life total to one maybe simplifies that a bit because the game probably isn't going to go on much longer after the one person, you know, the first person to hit enough lands and like any creature or something is able to go off. But imagine if, if uh, World Fire set everyone's um, life total to like a hundred, right? Like that would just be awful for for no reason. Um, so that's that's my little two cents on that. Like the time wasting is um, certainly the issue. Now, with divine intervention, there's there's two things I want to talk about, and that's um, the competitive aspect that you were talking about. Um, and then maybe the time wasting aspect. I think divine intervention in terms of a time wasting aspect doesn't isn't really a thing unless you kind of view it as it invalidated the entire previous game. Like like every every action up until the divine intervention was cast has been invalidated. Because as soon as divine intervention has its effect resolved, the game is over. Right? You're you're no longer held hostage yeah. by some crappy trying to top deck the your way out of a and and out of like the situation and you know mize into a win or something like that. The game ends when divine intervention yeah, I, resolves. So I don't think it's that time wasting. Yeah, I view the game ending in a draw as the game being wasted time. Okay. So this is this is where I I I can envision some scenarios where I just don't think that's necessarily the case. To to me, I like, don't view a funda ideally, fundamental difference between Someone resolving a uh, like a tooth and nail entwined to close out the game with Mike Trike, um, and the game ending there and them winning because that was their you know private goal versus them resolving a, resolving a divine intervention um, and the game ending because that was their goal. Like in in my mind, the fact that the game rules haven't decided a winner isn't doesn't really change whether or not that person to me it's that person achieved their goal um and it didn't result but in time couldn't wasting. you say the same thing about i mean you could say the same thing about a chaos player like yes there's elements of time wasting but fundamentally like one of the important things and defining things of a game is that when everyone sits down there's a clear expectation about what the goal is and what the end state looks like and in my mind for competitive edh the goal for each player is for the game to end with them being the only player or like being the player who wins the game whether that means they're the only player left in the game or they had some ability that just made them win like that's the goal okay and so like if i went to a pickup soccer game and one person's goal was to make there be as many throw-ins as possible, and they just kept kicking the ball out of bounds. Like, that's the way I see people who are trying to make the game end in a draw. And and so, I'll, we'll probably come back to the um, to this first conversation topic about you know time wasting a bit because I, again I don't, I don't think it was uh, time wasting in you know they achieved the the chaos player achieving their goal of casting a scramble verse and being chaotic and quirky is not the same as the divine intervention because the game ends, right? The game, you're not forced to, to carry on. So once a divine intervention, like there is a fundamental difference between viewing something as a retroactive yeah, waste, yeah. retroactively viewing something as a waste of time versus actually having your time wasted in the moment, right? Yeah, the primary thing is not the time wasting. It's that the game, the goal of everyone in the game should be to win and Divine Intervention is not a card that can make that okay, happen. Okay, so now back... To, in, in terms of the, the issues with it being a competitive card, and this is kind of like me playing devil's advocate and attacking some assumptions, is that in a competitive environment, as, as an opponent, I would be happy um, with a 
draw, so 0 0.5 points. If, if, if a loss is 0, a uh, draw is 0 0.5, and a win is 1, I would be happy with a draw over a loss. Is that... We can all agree on that? If in a competitive environment... I mean... Vaguely? Like, not... You're in a tournament. Only if the points... Well, sure, but that's, like... Then, yeah, then in a competitive environment the the if i'm in a tournament then my goal is not to win the game it's to get points and and my ultimate goal is to have the most points at the end of the tournament or whatever the structure is to win the tournament but like it's the same reason it's sometimes correct to concede at a gp but like from the perspective of a a game of competitive yeah. magic no your goal so is to win. i think the, 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 the issue kind of devolves into when you look at instant, like you look at an individual game um, isolated from any other context and apply the term competitive to it. And what you're really doing is it's like, um, and, and I'm trying to, this is me making uh, your case, Morgan, is, is that it's like a practice, right? Let's say you're like a professional sports team. Um, and you're doing a practice. It's a simulation for an actual competitive event, right? A practice in itself, you, you ultimately don't care whether or not you win or lose, right? It's, it's about that it was a simulated event where you're then gaining well, from that experience to then be able to apply even, that for an actual then, competitive though, event. If because like, if... an, it's like practice matches of, 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 for a, a tournament, right? Like the, if the, there's nothing at, on, if there's no actual stakes... The only benefit outside of, um, like, having fun or whatever is that you're it's a simulated competitive event and you're able to test things and learn something like, from even, that experience. Even then, though, like, if you're... No, if you go not... play in, like, a soccer tournament or whatever, and, like, you're playing against a team that is obviously not playing to win, like, it, the win doesn't feel good, right? I don't know. Like... <sighs> Uh, it would feel pretty good if a team threw and there was something serious on the line. No, no, no. But to like, me. like if there was a million dollars on the line and your opponent purpose, threw, like they just started taking the ball and scoring. Own I goal. would, I would take the yeah, million it, dollars. It's not a satisfying win. If if your goal is the actual, so if your goal is the glory of of the win. Well, wait, is that the win feels good or is that you're getting a million dollars? Like, and that feels so. Good. If the goal is if the if the um prize is the sense of triumphing um over an opponent who is giving it their all then you know which, that's which is like, which is i guess i guess it's kind of like uh, nba about, right? like nba players or something I, okay hold, yeah, like, i think there's so, a lot so of assumptions my, built into my this. view my my goal with the format is to build the best decks i can and play them as well as i can and winning games is basically the output metric i have to determine how well i'm doing that the problem i have with the and, and if people show up with the intention of not winning then i like no longer have that metric to determine if i'm actually like if i've built a good deck if i'm playing it well if i'm improving as a player like so and that's what to me, me i think the, the the issue that causes the vision with divine intervention is the fact that it it actually ends the game and the only like if if divine intervention just said you win the game right there's there's the only difference is the idea of a draw versus a win the game is over and in my head i can just rewrite win versus draw right like that that and, and that somehow but changes it, the context the, completely the to, intentions of the person that you're playing against right but I think the problem with divine intervention is it's so easy to, um, to have the intentions like if they if they play in a way that um, to me when when someone is playing a like an optimum divine intervention deck, their list is going to be. I don't think there's a such thing. What do you mean? I mean I think optimal is a word that. That's Conte that's like, contextually in magic applies. That's to okay. That's just that's just dude. Optimal is not a completely contextual term for magic exclusive. Like you can say it's an optimal divine intervention deck, as in it's 
Optimal is trying to resolve the condition on divine intervention in the most efficient way possible. How is that not an optimal? How does it not become optimal all of a sudden because it's magic? And there's winners and losers. Well, it's the deck. It's not an optimal deck. It's an deck. optimal okay. divine Semantics. intervention deck. Sure. But, okay, so... That's a, an oxymoron. That's not an oxymoron, so, man. Come on. The, the, <laughs> just the issue that I have is just, like, it's the same thing as saying, like... Yeah, like, having a person at a top table, like, final table in a tournament... Feed me the game at the expense of the other two players. That feels great. Awesome. I won whatever the prizes were. It doesn't make it a competitive game. Like that, you can say that, that wasn't a real CDH game because it was just somebody king making and like giving you all the stuff that you need to win, right? Okay, we're, so we're, we're bouncing around in a couple of the different. So I, I'm I'm attacking this from multiple different angles, um, and this is bouncing a bit back and forth between the two. So I, I don't want to kind of lose the plot on my individual points on the the separate points and and confuse the two. So I, I'm just gonna kind of bring it back before I, I address your point, Reed. Um, so, if if Divine Intervention, if, if if you, if I can swap out the Divine Intervention, so, I mean, before we got sidetracked with the whole whether or not Optimal is an oxymoron when applied to Divine Intervention deck, um, you know, the, the deck that best is able to execute and resolve the Divine Intervention ability, okay? If that deck if, if if I can if someone is, is operating to execute that game plan um, and divine intervention could just as well be a um, tooth and nail right and I think the problem uh, another, another aspect of this that's important is that divine intervention is sim is, is appropriately costed for a card that would just win the game on the spot like a tooth and nail Um Whereas if, if I would I would be in complete agreement if divine intervention was a like a, a two drop or something, right? It just two drop draw the game, right? Like it, you have to put in a similar amount of effort into making divine intervention's ability go off that you would have to for winning the game. So in many ways, it it, it is a you are drawing the same experience of facing an opponent who is trying to execute their primary game plan that wins them the game when facing against a divine intervention player. That's why for me, it's so easy to um, say that it's not really uh, like, like there is still some value in that experience. But like, if it's just as easy to play a real spell and actually win the game, then why aren't they doing that? Like uh, to me, that's not really an, an issue. Like the individual players motivations are not like I don't have them to want to well, win but, no, for but, it to be a good okay, simulation by, by of, a, of, a, of a competitive game. If, if divine intervention is as easy or, or sorry, is as difficult or more difficult than actual win conditions, then playing to use it is is non-competitive because you're playing something. Your your end the game condition is worse than it could be, and if it's easier then, like, then you would also agree that but, that's a problem, uh, right? Like, if Divine Intervention was easier to get off than... Actual win condition, win. I would agree, yes. Okay. And if it's harder, then they're making their life harder for no reason and therefore not playing... I would agree in a 1v1 so, context where um, someone is playing a deck that... Like, if I'm trying to practice for a tournament and I go into, uh, let's say tournament practice rooms on like mtgo and someone is playing some uh what's oh god what's it? battle of wits and someone's playing battle of wits right i am not gaining much from playing the battle of wits deck beside that i would it's not like playing against my opponent is not really simulating a tournament environment where i'd be learning something and improving my skills more than just gold fishing Right or like it's slightly above gold okay. fishing, sure, but it's not like a not it's not a good simulation for a tournament environment. They're not playing a, a deck that's the most efficient way to try and win the game, right? It's the same like in CDH, and, and the reason why I don't think it applies for um, CDH and EDH generally is that people don't always play the most efficient strategy for winning the game. They play decks that they like 
that win the game and you know there's tier two decks tier there's tier 1.5 and i i don't think we begrudge people for playing a tier two deck that they enjoy um because they're not doing they're not playing the thrasios and timna tier one deck right but like we've certainly said in our what justifies the deck episode that you have to have some reason that deck has to do something better yeah. than another deck like if there's a deck that does everything it does just better then no it's not competitive to play that deck um so it's not cd so like i guess i want i want to drill down so in order for something to be CEDH, does it have to be a competitive decision? So if I'm playing my Tassiger deck that is strictly worse but than... It's, but it's not and this is Again, it's it very difficult because there's some... It there's has not, upsides. Again, I, I, I want we need, we need to... We need to um, abstract this because that's always going to be able to be a point of contention, essentially, right? Like, we can always come up with some But But that's scenario. the whole point. That's why is that... people are always like... Saying but strictly better in Magic is the Gathering there are, like, is pretty not... much any commander out there has a strictly better or has like something that they do better in the niche. Divine Intervention literally does nothing better than any combo that wins the game. Is is that the point you're trying to make, Morgan? That that because I I think that you can't say that Battle of Wits is strictly worse than uh, whatever tier one deck is in modern because it's better against Mill. Like I think that's just that's an argument that goes nowhere. Well, I okay, I don't know why Battle of Wits got dragged into this. It was just because, an example of a like, inefficient win con. Like it has upsides, like, right? But it's a harder to execute than most of the standard tier 1 decks. But like it it fundamentally like it does have upsides. Divine intervention literally does not. And, like I I don't know enough about what actually goes into Battle of Wits decks in modern to know what okay. those upsides so, are, but like I, I guess I, 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 I've got was, a great way. To, so I think the people are picking Battle of Wits because it's fun, not because it's the, the, of the competitive advantages that it may or may not have. So I okay. think that's a here, good here, distinction. Here's my: if there was a Thrasios that just was exact, it was the exact same as Thrasios, it still had partner, but its ability cost three and a blue. It would fundamentally be anti-competitive to play that as your commander. Um, sure. Okay, so I, 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 I like this. <laughs> so if, if it's literally called Thrasios Triton of Hero or, or Triton Hero, and it has the exact same text except for that fundamental difference, um, I might have more issues with it. But again, I, I don't necessarily agree because, it, for instance, it, it can, can we, for this example, have it just be everything the same as Thrasios, but have different art, different name or something like is that does, is that fine for you okay sure because people like building and this is the point i was kind of making with battle of wits um is that people while battle of wits might have some um you know unique upsides that might justify selecting that that deck over something else primarily people who play battle of wits decks i think we could all agree are not doing it because of those unique upsides that it might have. Okay. Is, is that fair? Sure. Because I, 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 would, I would think so. And I would also call their choice anti-competitive. Okay, so... Like, if that's the case, if they're saying, this deck isn't good, but I play yeah, it because yeah, it's fun, okay. then that's anti-competitive. Sure, sure. And and like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I agree with that, okay? It's, it's anti-competitive. But that's part of the game of magic and um a lot of the fun is people doing things because they enjoy them so the reason why i wanted to, to stipulate that this alternate thrasios could have alternate art or a different name is because some people might resonate with that you know more strongly than with thrasios itself right people might find the art uh, you know compelling or interesting or something so if they if they decide to build that deck I don't have an issue with them choosing that deck so long as they're they're trying to pilot it to the best of their ability um, and, and trying to execute their plan, which, you know, is, let's say, winning the game or resolving a tooth and nail, okay? So it might be anti-competitive um, because there is a strictly better option, but I don't think that is... You know, I wouldn't say that it's not CEDH because I don't view CEDH as everyone making the 
optimal competitive decision in terms of deck selection. Um, I view that more as uh, like there's there's a bit of a balance, obviously, because if someone's just playing you know chair tribal, then that's not really CEDH. Uh, to me, CEDH has to do with um, you know a certain power threshold and playing. Uh, to the best of your ability to execute your game plan, which for most people is but, winning the okay, game. Here, uh, here's the... I think this is the last sort of philosophical point I'm going to make because we definitely can't drag this on too much longer. If someone was playing Splashios, and it's the same, but it requires yeah. a blue to activate the ability, and they assembled Isochron Scepter, Dramatic Reversal, Mana Vault with Splashios in play and didn't win the game, and then I won the game, like, that would suck. Like, I, I would not feel good about that win. Yes, I, I, I understand what you're saying because you're it's so easy to make the comparison that if you were playing Thrasios instead you would win. But honestly, I don't view, I don't find that to be the case if, like, I'm play, facing against, uh, again, you can bring up the point about Tassiger has some upsides over, over, um, Thrasios, but I guess it's the uh, closest to um, a real ag- example of this kind of scenario where, like, I, I don't view like I was, I don't feel bad about winning a game if the thra- if the uh, Tasker player can't generate the appropriate colored but mana. They very well might have chosen to play Tasker because con. of the other reasons why there is to play Tasker. Yeah, but I don't care if they just, if they chose Tasker like to me it's indifferent whether or not they chose Tasker for the you know because they like his art better than Thrasios to me that doesn't matter so long as they're trying in that instance of the game trying their best to win the game I don't feel like I was robbed um by them not playing Thrasios Timna because that in that exact scenario they would have um won to me that 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 that's not the case and i do think i i, I do like the, the the example you brought up with Splashios like, versus what, Thrasios do you not do you not feel robbed if, like, someone shows up to a competitive game with Chair Tribal? No, I do. I, I said I, I view CDH as a certain threshold, so of, what's a the certain threshold of power, and I view uh, Tasker as above that threshold of power. And the rest was within the game, trying your best to execute your game plan, which for most people is winning the game. And it's, for me, like, Divine Intervention, if your game plan is... Um, there are certain stipulations on the game plan that would make it not CDH, right? Like the view, the thing with divine intervention for me is that like it, because it's, it ends the game and it's so easy to substitute with an imaginary, I had won the game instead. It's like playing, um, it's like boxing or something like you, you're, you're doing a simulated boxing at the gym, right? Against a training dummy that can never actually beat you, Right. So long as it's an approximate, um, it, 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 you're able to take something away from that experience in terms of, um, you know, you've learned something or, or developed some skills, it, it has functioned as a good simulation for uh, a real fight. And it's going to help you when you actually get into a real fight. But even if it can never win, like that, I don't, that doesn't take away from that experience, in my opinion. So to me, it's like, I have learned something. But it's not the same experience as boxing against an opponent. And when I show up to a CDH game, I'm expecting to box against an opponent, not a, a boxing But to, to me, what it's like is is the divine intervention is like boxing against a real opponent. Um, and they beat you. They pummel you to the ground. And just as the ref is about to say, you know, hold up, hold up his hand and say, you know, the, declare him the winner. He says, um, no, nah, let's call it a draw. That still like, feels the, the, the actual shitty. experience up until everything of that point was real. Everything was real until the end. And, you know, there is no actual drawback than maybe feeling like hollow, right? Like if you maybe thought that they weren't trying their hardest, um, maybe you feel a bit robbed there. But if they actually are trying their hardest to resolve this divine intervention ability, it, it, it to me, it's just indistinguishable from someone trying to, to win the game. Through some other, through, through some I, I, alternate, I mean, I do some alternate non. I do also means. think it's it's kind of unhealthy for there to be a mechanic where, like, one three players who are losing can say, "Let's make this game a draw." Okay, I, I would agree that the you you run into issues with um like 
you, you throw off the, the competitive balance of free for all with that. And I would certainly concede that point that, you know, that card, the, the fact that you might incentivize people to do that is, is not healthy. So like point taken, but if, okay. if that's not a factor, I don't, I don't view it to be an issue. Uh, for the reasons I've okay. stated, yeah, and and again, this is it's all very much tied to how divine intervention is exactly the way it is. Like, if it's more efficient, that's a problem, and for the fact that generally magic um, and competitive EDH, like people are allowed to play decks that they find fun, um, or that they're maybe better with, and and or they're allowed to pick decks um, and strategies for reasons that aren't purely competitive, and that doesn't make it a non. Um, worthwhile endeavor i guess yeah worthwhile sure. endeavor yeah, yeah, yeah sure yeah i got that okay well i could have definitely carried on for another hour and a half uh but i don't think we'll be i don't think we'll be doing a part four um maybe sometime if if people are listeners are interested in carrying on this discussion um i'd be down and i don't know if any of you guys, you guys seem pretty drained. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe uh, after some sleep and this is passed for a while, uh, you'll change your mind. But yeah, so if if listeners want to carry on the discussion, um, I'd be interested, and in, you know, maybe we could record that and release that as like some bonus. I wouldn't even call it a bonus episode, like some into the north B sides like clip or something. I don't know. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're interested in that. Uh, DM me or, or post on our Discord and uh, we can arrange something. Uh, Hi everyone, thanks for checking this out. Uh, I hope you feel it was a good use of your time. Uh, as Lyndon mentioned, if you are interested in this sort of content, then definitely let us know on the Discord and we're certainly happy to engage in discussions there and potentially record little snippets like this uh, in the future. Though I don't know if you can call this a snippet given that it's basically half an hour long as long as some full podcast episodes but we want to keep this sort of content out of our main episodes just so we can more focus on topics that are more relevant to the majority of cdh players rather than going on deep dives on these very specific things uh but again everyone thanks for listening and have a good one hope you enjoyed this mm -hmm.